Hey everybody, it's Neil from Growlies. Um, today I wanted to talk about crystals. So you've all heard about them. They're more common in cats than they are in dogs. They're more common in male cats than they are female cats. Um, it, with cats, it's specifically uh, almost always dry foods that are causing those. Um, uh, and what it is, it's this lack of um, uh, flushing of the bladder that uh, causes um, struvite crystals, oxalate crystals, but mostly struvite crystals. Now, so a couple things. I am not an expert in this. I only know this because I've had to know this over what, 12 years of running the store. We've had this conversation a number of times. I'm not an expert, and please, if you can correct anything I say here, do so in the comments so that I learn, because I'm, you know, making clear here. A couple things, though. We had a customer approach us. His dog got struvite crystals. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, so you're dealing with the infection? And he goes, oh, yeah, she got antibiotics, but she also got, I also got told I had to change food to one of these, you know, um, SO or JE or GD or, you know, they put these names in there so that they, we think that they're really different than the other one, but they're not. If you look at them, they're not. Um, if you, actually, if you look at them, they're not very different from anything you buy in any grocery store either. Um, now, these are prescription diets, though. And so they call them prescription diets, but there's no prescribable ingredient. And so they don't actually require a prescription. They just say that. Um, they don't require a prescription except for that the company who manufactures them makes them say that you have to have a prescription to get, it's a game they play. They've been sued for it, but they make billions of dollars. So nobody's ever won that lawsuit because guess who can buy really good lawyers? Um, but it makes sense to me that people should sue them to, when they're saying these are prescription diets and there's no medical prescribable ingredient in the diet. It's almost identical to the food that you buy at the grocery store in a bag as dry food. So there's, you know, don't let them play that game. So I had a customer, he come to me, he goes, my dog, she got crystals. I'm like, oh, so you're working with the vet on that infection? She's on antibiotics? And absolutely, because the crystals almost always, almost always follow an infection. Deal with the infection, you deal with the crystals. These are not stones I'm talking about, they're crystals. Stones may require a special diet for a little while to help those dissolve those stones. So what happened was, so they went to the vet, and the vet was a good vet and gave them the medication they required to deal with the infection that caused the crystals. But then, at some point in that meeting, the vet stopped being a vet and became a pet food salesperson. Now, we have a couple different things that happen in our area here around pet food, sales at veterinary clinics. Some of the clinics, let's say uh, VCA clinics in Banfield, are owned by the pet food company um, that uh, is represented in the organization. And so you can bet that since they're owned by the pet food company, they'll have sales numbers they have to make. Now they don't tell you when they're taking their white coat off and that they're putting on their salesman coat. They don't tell you that during that visit. At some point, they're taking that white coat off and they're becoming a salesperson. And uh, clearly they were, a they, they were able to uh, give him the medication he required to actually fix the problem. Um, but then they went into a sales pitch. And they're like, diet can typically dissolve stones and or prevent them. Now, as I understand it, and again, I wanna preface this, I'm not an expert in this. Um, diet isn't considered a predominant factor in stones if there's enough moisture. So if there's enough moisture, um, the diet really, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not the biggest factor there. Uh, infection certainly is though. Uh, so, uh, and, and there's a special prescription urinary diets, but these, and so they even say it here, but these are only necessary if there are stones to dissolve. So okay, so that's where you would actually get into a medical necessity of a uh, uh, thing. Um, there's regular type of diets that have an SO index. So this is where they go in, they, you start using um, nomenclature that is designed to confuse you. They do that on purpose so that you think that they're giving you something that's really medically necessary. 
So, uh, which means that they are formulated and tested to prevent struvite and oxalate types of stones and crystals. Now, what they don't say is as compared to a fresh food diet. And they don't do that because they wouldn't ever release that study, number one, because the study would show the fresh foods are better at it than the, the dry kibble foods. But they also don't do that because ultimately it would show that you know fresh foods make more sense than the, the dry food diets and the kibble diets that they're selling. Um, so even if they, because let me tell you, if they did the study and it showed that fresh food wasn't as good at dealing with crystals than their, their kibble, they would show that study in a second. They would, that study would be plastered on the front page of New York Times. And so, and so um, they would recommend though, because the dog had had some joint issues in the past, you know, um, uh, 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 JD, which is a joint diet um, with natural anti-inflammatories and omega-3s. Um, so those omega-3s in a dry bag of food, um, when exposed to oxygen, oxidize and become useless and um, so you once the bag is open the counter has started um, do refrigerate that bag because um, that will extend the life shelf the shelf life of those oils those fat, healthy fats um, but uh, if you leave or cut open the bag and feed the bag and leave it under a counter or in the shelf um, it's oxidized in a week it's no longer any good it's not healthy anymore fats are starting to go rancid, um, the, uh, the omega-3s are no longer a benefit. Um, and so they don't tell you anywhere in any of the write-up here that he was given that, that that's the case. Okay, so uh, with natural anti-inflammatories and omega-3 fatty acids, why not just feed... Okay. Collagen-rich foods and omega-3 fatty acids just feed collagen rich foods and omega-3 fatty acids. I'd also use things like hyaluronic acid, MSM, glucosamine, uh, chondroitin, even the, maybe a little CBD um, as an anti-inflammatory to help those kinds of things out um, that could certainly help. Okay, so, um, or uh, some GD, which is a senior diet for aging dogs, um, also with an SO index, um, and, and or, uh, 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 a mature consult or so they're trying to you know get, get you to come in and do another so but my point here is the foods that they're offering the solution there that solution that was a sales pitch that was not part of the medical consult that was originally paid for and you have to be careful with your uh, vet whoever you're going to um, at what point recognize the point at which they stop being a medical professional and become a salesperson because it happens it, so oh I said earlier so we got one set of uh, clinics here they're clearly owned by the pet food company VCA Banfield those guys are clearly owned by pet food companies those guys are clearly have a mandate with which to sell that food however we also have the other type where guys like Nestle have funded the startup of that organization behind the scenes it looks like the vet owns the organization but they're economically beholden to Nestle um, and so that has happened in our area um, those people do have an anti fresh food um, uh, stance uh, they're very clear on it except for when they come in my store and ask me to market for them and then they're like oh no we're we're totally okay with fresh food absolutely and then the customers come in and go no they're not in no way are they. They are very clearly against what you do. And so um, just remember, at some point in that consult, they stop being a vet and start being a salesperson, and that's where I start to lose trust in them. And so um, fresh foods are better. In this scenario, what did I tell them to do? Deal with the infection that caused the, the things. Do the ultrasound or the x-ray that they, they want to do in order to ensure that there's no stones. Because if there are stones, just like with humans, they do have to be dealt with. Um, and then uh, uh, in, uh, I would use a pH balancer, um, something you know, like a cranberry-based uh, Easy Peasy or Cranimals or something like that in that dog's diet. It assists, it's not a cure-all, but it can help with uh, uh, normalizing their pH. 
Um, the other thing I would also do is encourage further hydration using things like bone broth or just added water to every meal to keep those kidneys flush, to keep that batter, bladder um, washed through so that there's always good fluid moving through those, that bladder and keep it healthy, which will mitigate the, the potential for a bladder uh, another bladder infection. I hope uh, you found this helpful. I don't like to go beyond 10 minutes and I have. So um, be well, everybody. Uh, wash your hands. And uh, uh, thank you for continuing to support us. Cheers.